Hello and welcome back to my craft room, my newly tidy craft room which I'm thoroughly enjoying at the moment. <laughs> I'm having a chilled afternoon doing some pages in my reckless journal and um, I've got another one ready to show you now. Let's have a look. This one says, this page says, uh, tear strips of colour then try some plaid. I'm going to combine this page with the following page which is glue, staple or tape these pages together. And I'm going to cut into this page to give me a base to weave on, tear some strips of colour out of some of the pages that came out the back of the book and then weave plaid actually into the page. And this will be, this will be stuck down. That's my plan. So I'm going to use these two colours. I've nearly used up all the colour now. I've kept all the little scraps. <laughs> There's one page where I've even been gluing the scraps down. Where, are, where is it? Uh, mm. I'm doing a bit when the fancy takes me because it's a bit of a... Oh, there it is. There we go. <laughs> Cut up tiny bits and glue them here. So when, when I'm in that kind of a mood, <laughs> I do a bit of that. I don't think it's something you want to watch a video. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use this blue and orange. I love the way the colours on these pages aren't just flat colour, they've, they've got a lovely variegation in them. I've chosen blue and orange because they're opposite on the colour wheel, so I think they make a nice contrast. Um, I'm going to do one, cent one centimetre strips, so I'm going to cut the strips into this page and tear them from this paper. I've it Actually, once I started to look at plaid patterns they're really they're really quite complicated to make it look like plaid and not just checks and it's because of the way that you know the, the plaid is woven together so the, you know even if it's a, only a two color plaid where they weave together you get shades of, of that color if that makes sense um, I'm also going to be using my artful pencils so we got a big set of color pencils in this month's artful box or this quarter's artful box and um, we also got an eraser and a ruler which I'll be using this is a nice really solid kind of unbendable um, metal ruler so I can cut against this um, I've, I've already pulled out that's one of the sketching pencils we've got I was just sketching the design out um, I've picked out just these four colours um, because I just want to be able to mimic the orange and blue that I've got there and I've got a white as well to go over the top more of that later rubber just in case and I've got a little um, craft knife oh and cutting board somewhere cutting that right there. so I'm just going to um, just measure my strips first and mark it with a pencil so if I go to that's 12 centimetres so I can just do that'll, that'll make the maths nice and easy I can just do centimetre strips I don't need to be too precise but I suppose reasonably precise so that it looks like actual plaid so I've gone about half a centimetre in from the edge there let's do the same at the bottom and then if I join up those these little tick marks that I'm making they should be a more or less straight line like I say, nothing to, don't need to stress about it, it's not that crucial. Well, <laughs> the stone lines didn't end up too straight. I went a bit skewed with my wrist was given out on me part way through so <laughs> oh. oh should I do that last bit uh, probably let's just rub out my little marks okay so this is this is essentially the uh, the warp thread of my of my weaving that I'm gonna do right so now I need one centimeter strips ish of this oh well I was going to tear these lines wasn't I oh okay let's see if it will let us tear I'm going to use this metal ruler as an edge to tear against so I'll get a tear but it'll be reasonably controlled tear 
is my hope. And it's easier to put this down and hold and pull the tear the big part away than it is to hold it down here and tear the small strip away. I will just try it just to show you what I mean. See, it just gets more fiddly. Not impossible, but so that's why I'm doing it this way. As I said, the plaid patterns are really quite complicated and I'm not sure until I get into this how it's going to work out, but we'll see. So I'm going to start by doing an orange across here, in, out, in, out, all the way along. I'm going to do all the weaving first and then glue these pages together. Second row. I'm going to do the blue and I'm going to go over where I went under before and under where I went over before. So far so simple. Okay so that's my third row in. So I just need to do that all the way down. Um, alternating the, the orange and the blue um, and I'll come back and catch up with you when that's done. You don't need to sit and watch me doing this. <laughs> okay I'm just going to use a little glue stick now. Oh sniff it. None of them smell like Pritt stick. <laughs> I'm just going to glue these down at the edges. That's, that's my basis of my plaid page. I'm just going to stick these together now. I'm just wondering, is there a way that I can still show that page? Yes, I think what I'm going to do is sort of glue it up to about here. So wherever the, the, the actual plaid part is and then Page there so I can still see <laughs> that there was another page underneath there okay. and then on here I'm not sure what I'll do I might have it if I enjoy doing this I might have a go at another design of plaid or I might just um, draw somebody wearing plaid or I remember a little tartan party dress I had when I was a kid. I'm a bit tempted to, <laughs> to draw that. Anyway, so. Um, so now looking at my picture. I want these, all to, these squares that are currently white to be a paler version of that blue. So here's my pencils I picked out. Still doesn't look at all plaidy does it so i think the secret is going to be adding these extra little lines and things in the design i've got i've got a dark line running through all these lines of orange and pale blue so i'm going to do that now i'm finding these leads in these artful pencils are breaking really easily bit disappointing. I, mean, I don't think I'm being too heavy-handed with them, no more than I am with any other kind of pencils anyway. So yeah, 
I wonder if it's just me. I wonder if other people are finding the same thing. I certainly won't be buying the extra set because that's put me off. I mean, maybe I shouldn't, you know, be using the mechanical pencil sharpener, but again, I do with all my other um, colour pencils, like the Prismacolor and um, Polychromos and Posca. Oh, it's starting to look a little bit more plaidish now, isn't it? I'm going to heavy this in a bit now. It's a shame that they're lovely to use otherwise. They go on really nicely. I like the colours. They feel lovely to use even on this cheapy paper. Um, but Okay, I thought I'd try using the normal sharpener instead of my mechanical one and I've still broken it. I don't know if I'm just being clumsy with them or what, but it's a shame. Right, so to try and make this look more plaidish, one of the things I noticed was you, you where you, the two colours weave together, you get a kind of a, an orange, uh, orange, uh, uh, either a lighter or darker kind of stripe across where the two colours have woven together. So I'm going to do that on here. Yeah, that is, that is a bit close up. You can see that's starting to look a bit more, kind of get that plaid sort of effect. Right, so now I'm going to add a bit of white. Um, and I think where the white strip is coming down, I'm going to add a darker blue strip down here. Considering I'm picking a pencil here that I've, I've hardly used this one at all except to swatch it. Um, considering I only had this last week and I've hardly used them, look how much it's gone down already. And that isn't from usage, that's from where it, it's broken a lot. So, yeah. Oh, that they're so lovely to use. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. They just seem to break really easily. Maybe I am just heavy handed. <laughs> Could well be. Right, well, I think I've done enough with that now. <laughs> it looks a bit more plaid like than it did when I started, and I like the way it's given it kind of almost a fabricy texture. I think what I'm fancying doing on the other side <clears throat> is probably a close up of a of a, of a shirt made of, of this material if it really existed. <laughs> um, I shall do that. Uh, quietly tonight whilst binge watching a bit of something. I've actually created a little pocket here as well, haven't I, which I could I could um, put something in, I don't know what. So yeah, I'll have a little think about that. So that's it. That's it for this one today. That was actually quite uh, therapeutic to do because it's very repetitive. It was just like, you know, decide on a um, 
where a line was going to go and just repeat it for every um, pale blue square or orange square or whatever yeah and just re re repetition is always very yeah so I repeat it which is why I do zentangle is so calming or, you know anyway enough waffling on thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again really soon bye I've been very low down in the seat today have I have I changed something about the camera angle and all sorting out maybe anyway I'm really going now